live. Welcome, beloved, to another edition of the Rock Newman Show Wellness Wednesday with the Minister of Wellness himself, Nathaniel Jordan. Today's subject matter is the Black Obesity Epidemic. It's an interesting subject, and I want to give you a little background. Last October, it could have been September or October 2022. I was at a football game, Howard University versus North Carolina Central University. I kind of want to forget that one because North Carolina Central spanked Howard that day. But I was there and I was uh, standing on the track. Um, I'd been fortunate enough to get, you know, all access. It was uh, North Carolina Central's homecoming. And so after standing on the track for 10 or 15 minutes, I decided to go in the stands. It was a really hot, sunny day. So I went in the stands and I got a seat on the first or second row where the largest area of ingress and egress was. You come in, come out. So I pretty much could see most of the people that were coming in and some of the people that were already there before I got there leaving. And I remember um, just feeling a certain sadness. Mm. I am someone that has struggled with uh, weight my entire life. But I felt a sense of sadness at what I was seeing. And what I was seeing, I'm going to characterize it this way, somewhere to 75 to 85 percent of every single person that went past me coming in or went past me going out were certainly overweight and a very very large percentage of those that were overweight were what would be fairly considered as morbidly obese I looked at the elderly, the middle-aged, and the youth. And part of what I saw, especially in the youth and in the middle age group, was clothing. As I told you, it was a warm day. So there was clothing that were booted shorts, halter tops, but ass hanging out, belly, butt, gut hanging out all over the place. And there was a walk that told me that they was, you know, showing what they got, that it wasn't covered up. You know, you may or may not know, we did a show on Lizzo in the past that created a stir and got some controversy. But after seeing this through halftime, also with Howard just getting smashed, I ended up leaving in a very depressed state. Howard getting whooped on was a small thing, seeing our people in this incredibly unhealthy condition and strutting around as if it was okay, natural, normal, I'm used to it, letting everything, all the fat, all the belly, all the gut, all the butt hanging out, you know, the arm fat. I saw it up close and personal, and some of it was sweating on this hot day. So when I got, before, before I got to my car, I had a little walk. Before I got to my car, I called Nathaniel Jordan, the Minister of Wellness. And I said, Nate, I'm not someone that easily gets depressed but I'm 
borderline depressed right now after I see our people. Told him I was at the game and what I saw. And my question to him was, have we lost the battle against obesity and morbid obesity amongst our people? If I remember correctly, his answer was, Brother Rock, I'm not throwing in the towel. I can't say we lost it, but we're losing it. And I'm going to continue to do everything I can to reverse it. So Nathaniel Jordan, the Minister of Wellness, today's subject matter, put it up again, the Black Obesity Epidemic. So let me go, let me go and act like I'm Gary, what was his name? Gary, the little short guy, Gary Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman. What you talking about, Willis? (laughs) The Black Obesity Epidemic. The floor is yours. Yes, sir. It was an honor to be here. As always, Brother Rock and uh, brothers and sisters, I do want to remind you all tuning in now and after to do three things to help our efforts to grow and to expand. The first thing is to hit the like button because that helps to spread this video in the algorithm. So please hit that like button. Exit the chat, hit the like. If you're watching this after the fact, hit the like button. The second thing is to share. Uh, we all know somebody that's obese. Every last one of us tuning in now or after. So will you share this video with everyone so we can talk about the black obesity epidemic? And the third thing is to make sure you subscribe to the Rock Newman Show 2.0 because as a quick reminder, we are doing these Wellness Wednesday podcasts leading up to the Black Health Revolution event in Washington, D.C., which will not be televised. It will not be live streamed. We want you to make the sacrifice to be there Saturday, September the 16th. So make sure you get your tickets at theministerofwellness.com on the health seminar, theministerofwellness.com on the health seminar. Hey, Nate, please let me jump in. Pardon me for interrupting. Yes, sir. But I got to do this. So yeah, it's Saturday, September the 16th, starting at 10 a.m. at Union Temple Baptist Church. Church in Washington, uh, D.C. It is one of the most, if not the most, Afrocentric center of faith that you'll find in this country. I just got off the phone with the pastor, Pastor Anika uh, Wilson, uh, the daughter of Reverend Willie Wilson, who uh, shepherded that church for 40 years. And she you can go to her Facebook page and start to see the transformation that she's made. She's lost. If I think I saw something that was in the neighborhood of 70 pounds and she was just thrilled about what we're doing said, indeed, she would like to give a, a, a few words and the blessings, um, on September the 16th. And this is someone who has embraced a health journey. And so it's like all the pieces for this event are coming together. Yes. She reminded me, I just want to do it because we literally just got off the phone. Yes, sir. She reminded me that it's Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Yep. And the following week, All the men, they're having a prostate cancer. Let me put that. So I actually took the note. Prostate cancer awareness walk on Saturday, September the 23rd. So, Nate, your passion for health, I don't know, man. It's like the stars are aligning. Yes. So, folks, we want to see you September the 16th in Washington, D.C. It's going to be an extraordinarily exciting, meaningful, impactful event that could save your life. What's more important than that? That could save your life. So, Nate, I jumped in. I did want to talk about. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, be there, family. No live streaming. Stop asking us. No live stream. 
Yeah, hey, no, no, no. Yes, like come on. Yeah, just 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 be there. Just be in the house. Yes, be sir. in the house. Um so uh, somebody I, 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 I please continue. Yes, sir. Somebody had uh got upset when they saw the title here and said, Well, why you you know that white people are just as fat as black people and the fact of the matter is that that's not true. Uh, we have a far worse obesity rate at this time than even white people. And plus, we are we are pro-black, meaning that we have a foundational focus on our people because because we are our people. We're 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 black, and so and there's no goddamn apology for that. Yes, sir. No apology. I'm go continue. And so. And so, yes. And so somebody did. They took, you know, uh, you know, took an exception uh, to that. Well, we don't care. You know, it is this. We need to talk about the black obesity epidemic. We're at not only at, are we at a near, according to the government, 85 percent obesity rate with black women making our sisters the most obese. But then we have our black men that are nearing over 70 percent. So these are horrible statistics that we have to talk about and what I what what my focus is is that the garbage that you see on this thumbnail the question that I'm posing is is this intentional meaning is there an intentional effort to make to to make and keep people fat and the answer is yes the answer is yes because the the food industry the and when all their different components meet dairy, candy, soda, they designed the food to keep you coming back for more. That's what they designed the food for. They want you to keep coming back. And they have made the food more addicting than, I, at this point, I'm, I'm calling it more addicting than heroin, meaning that the foods that we're addicted to gives the brain a psychological high akin to heroin. And as you can see on this slide, you see how does a rat end up obese? Well, the reason why I say that this is an intentional obesity epidemic <laughs> is because they test the chips and the junk food on rats, on mice, to make sure that it's so addicting they can't stop eating until their guts explode. And then they release these franken foods to the masses and that's why we have now a glorification of obesity and i also want to state this that unfortunately in the black community they use our black women and our black men to promote obesity acceptance now unless i'm wrong i don't see that in other races i don't see obesity acceptance agenda in whites asians Middle East, I don't see that. I see in black people, especially in America, it seems to be an intentional focus on making us the the center of this of this dangerous obesity epidemic. And so and so yes, it's on purpose. They make the foods addicting. They know it creates obesity, but they don't care. And of course, this benefits Big Pharma because when you become obese, this is what it leads to. These are just 10 of the 100 of the hundreds of different side effects of carrying more than 30, carrying 30% 30 higher than your, than your body weight is supposed to be. And we see here uh, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, sleep. Hey, Hey, Nate, do you mind? Let me let me make a comment here because, you know, you are so well aware of the terrible health aspects of this horrible diet and of us being obese. But I want to make a <clears throat> kind of spare of the moment social commentary. And it's this. If you if anyone is not aware now and this and i think people watching rock newman show 2.0 i think you are because i find you to be very conscious people let's start from the premise that america the united states of america was not welcoming 
of its African people other than to be <clears throat> like cows and horses, chattel slavery. Right. When people talk about the system of justice, it is extraordinarily reasonable to say that there is a absolutely a two-tier, two-tier, multi-tiered system of justice. White people and black people. We can go in all the statistics that we want to, to, to validate exactly what I'm saying. So if those who have been our oppressor practice this two-tiered, multi-tiered justice system, and you don't think for a minute that it is intentional what the oppressor has done and all of the with all the oppressor's tools and perhaps one of the most one of the most diabolical but effective yes is causing intentionally i would submit intentionally causing this obesity because to cause this obesity number one if you got this obesity and you have these cravings for food, like you do crack cocaine, <clears throat> it causes you to go and spend spend your money to get this garbage. When you get this garbage and you get obese, Nate, can you put the slide back? Um, uh, uh, the help the uh, the ten things that happen okay. from obesity. It just I'm, I'm type two diabetes, heart disease. Sleep apnea, stroke, hypertension, osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis, yeah. osteoarthritis, certain cancers, severe COVID complications, pregnancy problems, digestive problems. Now, if you think for a second that this oppressor is not diabolical enough to do this intentionally, because what do we know that in this capitalistic society, the dollar is much more the God of those who oppress us than is health. So therefore, how do they get that dollar? They get that dollar through, in part through creating intentionally this obesity and you suffer as a result of it. But Nate, I heard you say something about obesity acceptance that, yeah. and, and, and you know what, man? So many pastors in the church today follow that line of, oh, well, not just pastors, but across the board, man, across the board in our community. Yes. I ain't giving up my fried chicken. I ain't yeah. giving up my my, my 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 pig feet and a ha ha ha. There's a laugh behind it. Now look, I've done that. I have done that. I have said that. So I don't want to in any way be hypocritical or pointing a finger, because if I point a finger, three are pointing back to me. I want to be realistic about it. I'm 70 years old and just coming upon the realization of that culture, how we've been culturized yeah. to behave that way and to kill ourselves. And a young man here, Nathaniel Jordan, who is now dedicating his life to turning around that narrative. Folks, I, I, you know, I'm just going to say to you, I've represented champions. I've represented in the world of athletics, I've represented champions, including the heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Bowe, who I was involved with from the time he was an adventurer until after he won the heavyweight championship. I know a champion when I see one. Nathaniel Jordan is a champion. I'm going to invite you and ask you to support this man because he is on a mission that is delivering a hard message. So many don't want to hear it. Yeah. So many want to prevent him from expressing it. And I can tell you this, I can tell you this, and I got the receipts to back it up. I'm not talking no BS here. But I got the receipts to back it up. There are those who I am aware 
that have spoken to Nate and, and spoken to me about how much more lucrative, phenomenally lucrative of a career he could have if he would step back some from this stuff about talking the truth to power. Yes. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you guys to salt, to, to, to support him. It's a lonely mission, but I have absolutely been convinced that his message is one of the most important, invaluable message that any leader or otherwise is speaking today. Well, I just went off on a rant. It's sincere. Yes. And Nate, I hope you can pick up from where you were. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. I, um, you know, I mean, look at look at what they say, brother. Right. Remember, what do you see? What do you think about when you see this picture? You don't think about white people. So this whole thing of, well, why are you just talking about black obesity? Let's be honest. When you see this picture, you think of black folk. You think of soul food. And, and, and I've heard it myself that if you start preparing too much salad, They'll call we 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 make fun of healthy food, calling it white people food. So can't nobody convince me that that there that 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 we have been specifically targeted to be brainwashed towards unhealthy eating, and that we have embraced unhealthy eating and obesity, as you stated, brother Rod. You was correct. You know, you know, of course, I'm a minister, so I can I know firsthand. That even in the even in the Christian church, you there's a difference in the seven day Adventists who believe in vegetarianism. You go to the white seven day Adventist churches and you see you see more healthy, fresh foods and so forth than you go to the wheat. I mean, it's a it's a stark difference. OK, you, you're just not going to see a lot of white pastors and they just bragging about how much pork chops and fried chicken in the pool pit. So no, we have accepted obesity as a culture. We've accepted a death style of eating as a culture to the point where we call salad. Why are you serving that white people food? And that's a doggone shame. And this on this 10 health problems linked to obesity, it reminds me of an interview that I did yesterday that we'll see if it airs on uh, Revolt TV, the Black News Channel, Revolt TV, is supposed to air tomorrow. Uh, I don't know how much of my statements they're going to clip, but this stands out to me, Brother Rock, about severe COVID-19 complications. At the height of the pandemic, it is a verified fact that more than 84% of all COVID-19 deaths in the hot spots where masses amount of people were dying from COVID, they knew that over 84% of them were obese. So my how my mind works as the minister of wellness is that, and that's because excess body fat, the visceral body fat, it suffocates the organs and it suffocates the blood vessels, meaning uh, that it acts as a pollution inside of the body, weakening the immune system. By the way, folks, there's two there's two immune systems, the adaptive immune system and the innate immune system. And any immunologist will tell you that man has a very minuscule understanding of the complexity of the full immune system. So at the height of COVID, we have we have a, a virus that is wiping out the obese, the elderly and the obese. Where was the focus on addressing the root cause of obesity? Where was that focus? That we have a virus that is exposing that we are too fat as a nation. We need to start a national campaign on addressing the root cause of obesity. But guess what, Brother Rock? 
we already the government already this is why we can't trust them because michelle obama already tried before covid she tried and when michelle obama when she knew that it was the food she knew it and she started directly attacking the food industry a couple phone calls were made and all of a sudden we saw the former first lady shift from this on the screen to talking about exercise i'm a living witness i work out in the gym hard and brother rock is a witness to this and because i'm his health and strength coach and so brother rock knows i go hard in the gym and I am telling you, you can't outwork the satanic American diet. Yeah. And Brother just, Rock knows that too. You can't just, outwork no junk food. Just that piece, just that piece on Michelle Obama. If you <clears throat> if if you all remember, here was a lady that talked about having elementary school kids and beyond eating a healthier. Diet, having a healthier diet and they came after her with a vengeance the i mean it was beyond vicious how they came after her stay in your lane get out of people's business yeah. and all the rest and she was talking about those that were criticizing her they had many of them kids in school but they are so bought and poor, paid for yeah. by Big Pharma and the food industry that they absolutely gave voice and gave representation and gave provided defense for Big Pharma and the food industry. And Nate, you introduced that idea. I didn't know you were going to say that, but I want to I want to take it up because I want our people to understand, you mentioned earlier on that this is, it. we are obese yeah. and it is intentional by those that control the levers yeah. to make us more obese and to keep us obese. That is in the interest of those who absolutely have the interest of having us sick and fat. Yes, you're right. And 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 before Michelle Obama um, came into office, Oprah, when Oprah, um, when she learned the truth about the animal agriculture business, about how they torture and brutalize these animals, these cows and these chickens. I mean, they treat them in horrendous, disgusting conditions that are breeding ground for disease. And when Oprah learned about the sickening way that billions of God's animals are being treated, she said on her show, I will never eat another burger again, Brother Rock, when she made that statement, the meat industry, the oh. beef industry. Yeah. They came after her with with a viciousness and she never uttered those words again. And so that is why it's important, brothers and sisters, that we build a grassroots movement that is that that is that is not received a penny from these diabolical organizations because they can't shut me up or shut me down because they are not in I'm they're not in my pockets and I'm not in their pockets. Um, because that's very unfortunate. How ironic, Brother Rock, that that Michelle Obama was arguably the first out of all the first ladies who came in and she was going right at the food industry. They shut her down. And then a few years later, the entire world is on lockdown and in despair over a virus that even to this day, we're talking about verifiable that most COVID, I'm talking about 80% or more 
were coming from people who were obese and also had these other comorbidities. So what I have stated is that COVID should have been a wake up call. It should serve as a wake up call that we are pointed, that we are being systematically poisoned. Our immune systems are being systematically decimated. We're being set up for pandemic. We're being set up for it. We're, 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 we're eating in a manner that creates the very comorbidities that makes a virus deadly, but then we want to sit here and just ignore this and just talk about needles as if needles can overpower the, the, the detrimental effects of obesity. And that is foolish. Um, and, and, and my mission is to, is to get us to understand that that just doesn't make sense. You know, we have to get off the satanic American diet, which, of course, to do that, we have to start talking about addiction. Hey, Nate, I'm going to share something with you. Um, <clears throat> and again, this is recent and, and very real. Um, so, and, and folks, you know, in full transparency, Nate has moved to um, Boca Raton, Florida, where I live, and we're working to try to get this message out. And we're working to try to get some of this blubber off, a lot of this blubber off of me, and to change what has basically been, aside from when I worked with Nate five years ago, someone who is guilty of probably everything that you see in this picture here of consuming that. Well, Nate, I, I, I want to share this with you. I think you'd be happy to know. So Dee has been looking at a few of your books. And last night, and my, and my, <clears throat> literally, my granddaughter is here from Las Vegas for a week with us. And she's, she's vegan. She's 13. Her 20-year-old sister is vegan, vegan, whichever way people say that also. And so when my wife started talking about what she had been reading in your book, of course, that was music to my granddaughter's ear. And they last night went to an organic plant-based chef who conducted a class to teach them how to be more um, equipped to cook plant-based foods and to make and to make plant-based meals. So just thought I'd share that to you, man. Uh, sh wow. Share that with you. And they 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 left away they, the entire ride from Fort Lauderdale to Boca with traffic was about an hour last night. I was trying to listen to you know Donald Trump just having been indicted again. I couldn't hear the radio because they never stopped talking about how good that all plant-based food was and what they've learned. So I just thought I'd share that with you, man. <laughs> and, yes, and, right and, 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 and with our audience, we've got to, we have got to change our thinking. Hey, look, we know, we know here, here is number one. I know how difficult it is, but that, one of the things I think personally, and I know that Nathaniel Jordan is not afraid of a challenge. We know it's a challenge to get this message out, but we know how critically important it is, and we're going to keep bringing it. Yes, sir. And so, um, and so, brothers and sisters, make sure you all have liked and shared, liked and shared, and liked and shared uh, this video. Um, of course, the, the next step that comes and subscribe to the Rock Newman Show 2.0. The next step is how do we, of course, what's the solution? You know, we know the problem. What's the solution? How do you uh, prepare your body to be, um, to have a strong immune system? How do you reverse all of these diseases? Well, we got to address your food addiction. And how do you address your food addiction? Well, it starts with knowledge. So I encourage everyone after you subscribe to the Rock Newman Show 2.0, and like and share this video. I invite every last one of you over to the Minister of Wellness YouTube channel 
because at the Minister of Wellness YouTube channel, I have videos covering every single disease that leads to obesity. Uh, and I also have a full length sermon on how to overcome the 12 components of food addiction. Make no mistake about it. This is a drug. It ain't no way you sit there and eat until you're that big like you see on the screen if this isn't a drug. It is a drug. You must treat overcoming food addiction as a drug. If you don't, you will fail. And one of the things people underestimate is that these junk food bills, parasitic infection, and on my website, theministerofwellness.com, I have a parasite detox that will help you uh, to kill those parasites that leads to vicious cravings. And so I invite everyone to go to the website and, uh, and purchase the parasite detox package. And also the 12 components of my book specifically for obesity is my lose 100 pounds in 100 days book. And we have a brother, by the way, in the chat, brother rock, uh, this brother here has said he's lost 70 pounds um, and he gave a $10 uh, super chat to the Rock Newman show. Uh, but I believe Brother Laundry here said that he has lost 70 pounds following the Minister of Wellness health teaching since the pandemic. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Hey, hey Nate, I want to, let me see, you mentioned, um, oh, you mentioned the parasites. So, and I want to kind of, man, you are so well versed in this stuff, have done so much research and have studied, you know, it just kind of rolls off your tongue because you're so knowledgeable about this. But I want to keep it at a granular level for those who are toning in. I'm going to try to, you know, capture those things that kind of give an understanding and, and therefore would give, maybe give some motivation for us to make a real change. And, and, and it's this, you see your parasitic cleanse. So intellectually, I know, and probably the overwhelming majority of the people within our earshot that are looking at us, they know that at 1030 at night, when they get that craving to go to McDonald's or go somewhere and get some food, that is in helping you no way and that is hurting you intellectually we know we should not do that yes but we're overcome and we go do it anyhow when you talk about the parasitic cleanse cleanse and the parasites cause you to have cravings is that what you think in part is going on that just Hey, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I go do it anyhow. Do you think parasites are playing a role in that very bad decision making? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I know that from experience. Yes. Parasitic infection. Parasites. Candida is just one of thousands of them. And they are living organisms in the gut. They hatch eggs in your colon. And they send, the colon is linked to the brain, and they send signs, signals to your brain to eat when they're ready to eat. And what do they eat off of? They eat off of this. Okay? This is what they eat off of. White flour, uh, fried oils, uh, processed foods, parasites love white sugar, parasites love salt. So for those of you all who can eat a whole bag of potato chips, I'm one of those people um, that's that they thrive off of parasitic uh, dairy. So pizza heads, Chinese food. Yes. And parasites. Nate, Nate, let's 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 touch on this for a second, because you know what? When you when, when you look at that right there, that's all hot, warm food. See the cornbread muffins back there. Hey, man. Hey, hey, that'll make somebody's <laughs> mouth. <drool. laughs> but let me ask you. Oh, oh. But when we do that. We want to make sure that we got a cold glass of iced tea. Yeah. So highly sweetened iced tea, some kind of juice or soda. And what we're talking about when we talk about that iced tea, when we talk about that soda, is an abundance, an overabundance of 
sugar. Yes. To kind of help us get through this grease, get through this salt, get through how this food tastes, and that just compounds to, to that sugar just just dramatically compounds the problem. Somebody asked, um, "Is baked chicken good?" Uh, no, no. So you don't need to torture and murder an animal to get protein. That's ridiculous. Just go to a zoo, brothers and sisters, and look at an elephant or a rhino and uh, a hippopotamus, and you'll okay. understand. I was having a conversation with somebody, brother Rock, about how make no mistake about it. The largest carnivore would get decimated by the largest herbivore. There is not a meat eating animal on this earth that is strong enough to go head to go one on one with a full grown male elephant at its strength or a rhino or a bull. They'll get killed. So carnivores exist for the purposes of natural population control. Carnivores go after the weak and they go after the young to keep the populations in check. So no, you don't need to torture and murder chickens. Baked chicken has no killing value whatsoever. So the parasite detox package with black, um, black, uh, black, a uh, 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 black seed oil, uh, no black walnut oil, clove oil and wormwood oil. I'm sorry, uh, black walnut seed oil, clove oil and wormwood oil. And this is the package that I have used to great success. I'm taking it now. And you can purchase it at the ministerofwellness.com to give credit to the ministry. Take this very seriously, brothers and sisters, because if you don't take it seriously, you can't defeat parasitic cravings. I'm telling you, I've had that feeling. Uh, it's not fun when you can't even go one day of eating healthy. You determine and you can't even make it past the day. Because it's like you go into robot mode. Uh, I bet, man, I've been there. I, I've been there. I've been there. You know, my wife was like, I thought you were supposed to start today. <laughs> and I come up with some, you know, dumbass response. <laughs> that ain't real. It's just like I got something that's, that's got this hook on me. Like, as you say, like heroin. The white horse. James Brown called it the white horse. That addiction. Wow. Okay. Um, and Nate, it appears, and I'm going to go back to that football, homecoming football game that I was attending at North Carolina Central University. It, you just see so much more obesity in young kids. Yes. Elementary school, high school, and college kids. And you know what? Look, we can't. Trying to deliver this message, we can't have any sacred cows. Lord knows I love black colleges. I'm a black college graduate. I bleed Howard University blue and love all black institutions. Love all black higher education institutions up across the country. But the reality is you walk in and you see just what's on this table here. This yeah. kind of stuff right here. Yeah. Poor, poor, poor nutrition. Yeah. When you say we're culturized, we are. And it's a big battle. But we're going to continue to fight that battle. Yes, sir. We're going to keep on fighting, uh, brothers and sisters. And part of that big fight um, is you doing your, your, your part to support the Rock Newman Show and the Minister of Wellness Ministry. So, again, make sure you all like and share this video with somebody you know that needs to lose weight. And again, my specific book for weight loss is my Lose 100 Pounds in 100 Days book. It also includes an overview of the 12 components of food addiction, uh, making us making us fat and sick. And I am for the, uh, and I am also proud to announce, and this is very important for everyone who is a believer in Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. My new book is now available for pre-order, exposing the deadly slave theology of the black church concerning health and nutrition. I just released this yesterday. And for this month only, you can get 25% off in a signed edition um, of my slave theology book. This is one of two new books. The other one due to censorship 
uh, I won't mention here. Nate, please keep that up because it, it, it gives me a thought that I want to share with you. Well, you already, you're part of, of, of the message, but I won't call this name until I get permission. I'm going to ask this gentleman if I can use his name because he shared something with me and, and, and he didn't say don't tell anybody, but I want to give him the respect and the courtesy before I mention his name to ask him if he's okay with it. Mm -hmm. But the message was his father was a very prominent pastor on the West Coast. And he was, you know, sort of the ultimate soul food connoisseur. When this young man, young pastor, he's not so young anymore, but when this young pastor started his ministry, a year or two later, his father died at the dinner table on Sunday. Wow. 100% truth. Eating a plate of ribs and pig feet mm -hmm. literally died at the table and he has the picture of his dead pastor father to this day they took a picture he has that picture to this day and he has tried to get his congregants his congregation to be more healthy I was speaking to him about you. We'll talk about that later because he wants you to deliver a message. He wants you to deliver your message. So I'm thinking the day when you have here the this new book, Deadly Slave Theology of the Black Church. I'm thinking of that, and now he is one of the most prominent pastors, black pastors in this country. Yes. Okay. That's his experience. Your experience was you saw your robust father, who was a pastor, go from big strapping, healthy, you know, fine brimstone preaching mm -hmm. to having multiple strokes, heart attacks, and all the rest, and not be able to do anything for himself. I, I, I really would like for those who are tuning in now who may not have heard your story before to tell how it was that you became so passionate that in those that incident that caused you to be so passionate about delivering this message of health yes because because my father really believed what he was taught in in um in theology school you know white pastors taught my father i mean let's stop lying to ourselves we were taught uh the christianity we believe in through in slavery and my father he believed so much in praying over, praying to Jesus to bless his food that I specifically remember vicious, loud arguments. This is why Brother Rock know I don't debate religion at all. I'm, I mean, I remember Brother Rock, him having very loud back and forth arguments with my Islamic cousin about pork. And it was a it was a joke to my he was so secure in what them white pastors were teaching him about nutrition that he felt comfortable enough to make a, a, a large ham sandwich and he would just purposely eat it in front of my Muslim friend's face to show off that ha 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 Jesus allows me to be able to eat what I want. Especially after I bless it in the name right, of Jesus. Exactly. It wasn't funny when, when my mother had to call me because my father would fall after his seventh stroke and she wasn't strong enough to pick him up and she would call me and I would have to drive 30 minutes to her home just to pick him up off the floor. And, and I could see the look of embarrassment on his face. That's what drives me to do what I do. That, that I lost my father at 30 years old and he saw me lose all this weight and he can't even see 
this entire ministry that I've built dedicated to him. But in the foreword of my new book, brothers and sisters, I have in there that this is dedicated to him. Um, you know, because so so what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that I see that my father was, you know, I considered him to have been murdered by murderous theology. And this murderous theology is being pumped out to the airwaves every Sunday morning. Um, and it needs to stop. And I and I absolutely am saying that God himself called me to end this foolishness. And I won't rest until until you at least gonna know. You might ignore me and you might want to, you know, push me to the side, but by the time me and brother Rock get finished. Oh, you gonna know the truth, and that's all I care about is that you will know what causes diabetes, heart attack, stroke. You will know how to strengthen your immune system the right way. When, not if, when the next pandemic comes, you you will know, and that's all I want. And you want people to get healthy and to save their lives, and. I think, uh, Nathaniel, unless there was something uh, specific, either either we missed or you didn't get to, uh, we could end on that note. But the floor yes, is sir, yours. Yes, sir. Just, uh, and, and so just two minutes again, family. So that's the new book. Get your pre-order. Get it signed. Yes, copies will be there September the 16th. But if you want it signed by me, 25% off, you need to go to the ministerofwellness.com and get your pre-order. This is one of two new books that I have available. And of course, the ministerofwellness.com. I have other specials and packages and coaching. Visit the ministerofwellness.com. And while you're there, register your email. And when you register your email, you get my biblical principles ebook for free. So make sure you register your email, like, share, subscribe to the Rock Newman Show 2.0 but then make sure you also go to the Minister of Wellness YouTube channel and subscribe there. And um, and we'll, I think we have about um, five more Wellness Wednesday podcasts, brothers and sisters, and it'll be time for the Black Health Revolution. Minister of Wellness, Nathaniel Jordan, thanks for spreading the word. Folks, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your Folks, that tell your people at work, tune into The Rock Newman Show. Subscribe to The Rock Newman Show 2.0. We do speak truth to power. Thanks for joining us again today. And until the next time, God bless you. God bless you all.